What is BIM? What is IFC? How are they related? Why should I care about them as a structural engineer? And how can I integrate them into my design workflows? By the end of this video, these were just some of the questions I'll answer. But you should know, BIM is really the future of engineering, as it helps improve your design efficiencies, improve your quality control, and give you more time to refine your design on the elements of the design that actually matter. It is really the future of engineering. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. BIM is an acronym standing for Building Information Modeling. It's all about integrating information into your 3D modeling. And this is what makes it important to have it as a structural engineer, as everything we do is integrating with information. So it can help integrate some of the information in our modeling to help improve our design workflows. But what are the levels of BIM that actually exist? You probably actually started with BIM if you're working in the industry, as we have a series of different levels that step up in complexity as we go through them. The first one is level zero. Now level zero can either be a 2D or 3D element, just integrating the size and geometry of all your structures. So this is normally something in a CAD or a Revit, but in its 2D format. So if you've made any 3D model, blue beam drafting, or any type of digital model, you've actually gone to the level zero of BIM. Next level up from level zero is obviously level one. This is where we typically move into our 3D models and it allows for cross collaboration between the engineer and the architect. The model only has very basic information. It's similar to the examples of level zero. You may have the floors on the right level. You've got some sort of 3D geometry modeled in there and allows for an integration between you and the architect. But again, the information is still very limited. Level two is typically where most projects sit now today, as level two has more of that coordination back and forth. Models are typically modeled in 3D with elements of their typical size and geometry, and allowing for clash detection and coordination between you, the architect, and the other services. And this is where most projects sit today, is at this level two level of BIM. But there's another level beyond this, and that is level three. And level three is normally that holy grail when you're working within one integrated model. So the engineer is laying on top of the architectural drawing and laying on top of the services drawing. So everything's integrated in an open format. So that way everything's getting worked live. You can automatically detect class detections. You have more information in there. So you may have even connection details and shop details inside your model. Typically most projects, if any projects actually hit level three, if at all, as the complexity in this type of modeling at this point in time is highly time consuming. And we haven't really worked out how to share those models in an open way that allows other people to manipulate the data. So most projects today are sitting between somewhere between level one and level two. During this content, smash that like button as it gives me an idea of the type of content that I need to create to help you guys out. Now let's keep going. BIM is also broken down into a number of subcategories in both levels one and level two. This is known as LOD or level of detail or level of development. This ranges between a number of 100 at the low end to 500 at the highest. And as we went up in the complexities, the more detail and time consuming it is to detail the model to that level of documentation. And you may actually jump between level one to level two to level three at the high end. So what is the level of detail that you can have in your model or LOD? If we start off with LOD 100, this is really only a basic geometry. We have size, geometry, location, orientation, thicknesses, the basic knowledge of information that you need to build the structure. So it also have the reinforcement in there, but it will not necessarily be modeled. It's only got a really written text in there with very minimal 3D modeling. There may or may not be coordination at LOD 100, but it's really the bare minimum information that you require to build a building. Most of the time when you have developed a building, you've modeled at least to an LOD 100. And now we move up to level LOD 200. Now it's a more complex models, Typically everything's modeled to the right size and thickness and locations. It allows for that coordination. You may have a little bit more information into the modeling depending on your requirements as they do vary slightly. It also has all the basics from LOD 100. So you need to be able to build off these models. So most projects would typically sit in the LOD 200 or 250 depending on the complexity of your model. But at LOD 200, you're really only modeling the 3D geometry and size and location of your structure. Then we move on to LOD 300, which is getting more complex and is a big step up this location. Typically at LOD 300, you may need to model structural connections. So allowing for assemblies and locations of bolts. So you've really stepped up the complexity in that model. So you've matched everything that's in LOD 100 and LOD 200. So you've got the right size and geometry of everything. You've got the right locations. You're allowing for that coordination back and forth. You're potentially even listing model parts, locations of bolts, shop detailing, and some basic assemblies. Then if you move on to a slightly higher step, which is LOD 350, again, it's got everything else below it, indicating some of those interfaces and how things are connected and some more documentation about graphics 
and notes about how things are put together, may have even some more model parts. But again, this will vary on a project to project basis. Then if you move on to LOD 400, now this is a full fabrication model. So it's a big step up from the ones before it. It's got everything else before it, but you should be able to build everything off this model. So it's got all the assemblies, it's got all the bolts, it's got all the connections, everything is modeled precisely. So it allows for that detailed coordination. They can essentially take the models out of the structure, put it onto the steel shelf and fabricate it as it's documented. Then if you move on to the final one and the most complex one, which is LOD 500. Again, having everything else below it, but this also has some of the operations and commissioning and decommissioning of structural elements. So each element is tagged specifically with operation manuals and other model parts, where they are, where they're located, how to service them, all the stuff you would need to operate that building. As you can see, as we're moving through these steps, you're actually stepping between level one to level two to level three BIM modeling. Most projects you do will probably sit at a two, 250. Some of the more complex models, especially in infrastructure, may set up the 300s, but very few, if any, will set up that LOD 500. Due to the complexity and the time it takes to put them together, it's very unlikely that you've stepped up to an LOD 500 project. Just good to know, so when you are tendering on projects, you need to know the level of detail so you know what you're agreeing to. BIM, Building Information Modeling, is just related to the model itself. And there's a number of programs that you can actually save that in, whether it be Tecla, Revit, which is probably the most common, Archicad, or a number of others. As there's a number of different formats, it comes hard potentially to swap data between service engineers, structural engineers, architects. So you need some way of integrating this. Another problem with also modeling a building information model, especially if you're using it for final state for the client, I'm not sure if you've ever tried to open a file that's more than 10 years old. It's almost impossible. So th there's a way we get around this, and this is IFC or Information Foundation Classes. Essentially, it's an open source file format that allows you to transfer all the data, geometries, locations, and whatever else other data you have inside your structure to someone else. And they're able to freely build that model for whatever format they're currently in. So IFC overcomes that, allowing for a common format that you export your data into to allow for data to be transferred between person to person. Now there's still some complexities about this, as how you export the data can be different between each program. So you need some sort of agree format to ensure that you're exporting the data correctly. But IFC makes that so much easier. The other benefit is that IFC is an open format. As such, when data essentially progresses and IFC Revit models increase further and further, you're still able to open that model and build it for whatever format you need. As you can get the open source code, decrypt it and turn it into a 3D model. So it sort of overcomes some of that requirements of getting outdated software as you're able to rebuild the model for whatever format of modeling you're currently in or how you're trying to view that project. So it's highly important, especially when you're producing a model to a client that they'll have access into it in the future. So instead of just giving them a Revit file, I'd recommend moving into a format such as IFC so it future-proofs that data into the future. So now that we've gone through BIM and IFC and you have a basic understanding of where it sits, it all sounds like modeling and drafting. Surely that's not part of structural engineering. But this is where you're wrong. As the one primary component in BIM is information and everything we do as structural engineers is some sort of manipulation of data. So if we integrate it into our format, we're able to increase the workflows from that information modeling, port it into our designs, spit out analysis to come up with our correct answers. There's a number of different formats you can do this in. You can either write your own programs in Python or in VBA, as you can generally export the data into an XML format and post-process it in a format such as Excel or Python. Also other programs like Rhino and Grasshopper also allow for this integration where they link up different modelings all the way to eTabs or other modelling software. But by processing this data, you're able to quickly save a lot of time. I'll give you one great example on why this is beneficial. I worked on a project called Queen's Wharf. I'm not sure you've actually heard of it, but it's one of the biggest projects in the Southern Hemisphere. It was a casino with four towers. So it has a residential tower and two hotel towers. And one of the hotel towers actually had two architects in it. So coordination was really a nightmare as you need to go back and forth all the time to try and make sure everything else is lined up and coordinated. By integrating BIM into this project, we were able to quickly and efficiently coordinate between the services engineers, the structural engineers, the architects, and other consultants involved with the project. It allowed for a quick, efficient transfer of data and allowed for a more integrated process through the tender phases. This project was so big and had integrated into the heart of it, that BIM modeling, that it actually won an award 
for the BIM modeling that was involved with that project, where in 2020, it won the BIM modeling project of the year. This project could have been delivered the normal way, however, it would have been highly complex and likely led to a lot of clash coordination later in the project's life. But probably one of the biggest things that I took out of it was late in the project, they decided they wanted to future-proof the design by increasing the load on a number of floors. This project was so large, it had over a thousand columns, over a thousand pad footings, and for them to increase the load across the whole height of the tower would be an enormous job if we hadn't integrated BIM in how design workflows. So being notified that they wanted to future-proof it and increase the load allowance on all these designs, with a quick flick of the button, we're able to redesign the whole model from top to bottom. So we redesigned all the columns, all the pad footings, and updated all of them in the model, including updated the reinforcement size of pad footings, reinforcement in the pad footings, everything within under half an hour of receiving that change. This allows for a quick, rapid scheming of a building and also allows us to quickly cope with the needs of the client. As you can see, that would have taken hours under a traditional format and potentially led to great overdesign of your structure. So by integrating BIM and allowing our workflows to incorporate it is highly beneficial. So where does BIM really hit its benefit? This is really in the bulk processing of data, such as load rundowns when you're trying to design columns, core design when you've got a really big element that's all the way from top to bottom, header beams, and other elements like that, where they're bulk process across the whole part portion of the structure. That's where by focusing on those elements that take the most time consuming point of view, you actually save a lot of time. Another area which we're also saving a lot of time is modeling of 3D reinforcement. So we're able to quickly export it out of a program such as RAM into our Revit, clean it up and issue it out. So we actually have 3D reinforcement with PT modeling in there as well in a quick format. The one benefit about linking up your analysis to your modeling is you eliminate some of that copy and paste error that happens all too often as structural engineers. Despite being the best of what we're doing, we can always make a mistake. As I'm sure that anyone who's actually played the whisper game, when you start at the start of the line, the whisper gets set and down the line, and by the end of it, it can change quite dramatically, despite everyone trying their best to remember it as they heard it. The same thing happens when we hand out our markups. Despite our best efforts, there can still be errors made and missed. Where if we integrate the analysis with our modeling, those copy and paste errors essentially vanish. So improving your design workflows and quality assurance. And as it's speeding up all those processes that are more time consuming, you can spend more time on the stuff that actually matters, such as modeling those outriggers, core connections, and other elements inside your structure that may get left to the last minute though they're highly critical. And by spending more time, you can refine those connections and actually find additional savings inside your structure. So I highly recommend anyone, especially on a big project, is trying to look at what information can I pull out of the model and how can I port it into my design? And really using all those bulk element processing such as columns, load rundowns, wall designs. But there's a really big saving you can have by integrating BIM into your design workflows. Now, it will take a little bit of time for you to process that data. There's a number of different ways, especially if you spend the time to set up your model. It's really the future of engineering due to the savings that can be achieved if it's integrated effectively. Are there any other ways that you would want to integrate BIM into your design workflows? Please comment below. And if you have liked this video, smash that like button as it gives me confidence on the type of content I'm making. And sorry for being a little bit sick this week. I'm a little bit under the weather. Don't worry, it's not COVID, but I will get better and keep these episodes coming. They really mean the world to me. And if you haven't subscribed at this point, hit the subscribe button and to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.